All right, back on the farm. Opening day of trapping season for fox, coon, weasel, skunk, possum, all that good stuff is open. Uh, only our water trapping is not open. You can see here that the farmer came in on Friday and he cut all the soybeans down. So there's no soybeans left on the farm, only corn. So you can see here are big open expanses, big open fields. Which is good for me because now I know he's not going to be driving in the fields again. Uh, at least not that he's going to prep it to plant it. So I'm going to trap the corner of this field. Uh, let's see, right here. I've caught foxes in this location before. I also have video, well, the video you've seen on my last uh, video that I put up has a video of a fox coming right along this hedgerow here, right out of this field. So I'm going to put a, a trap here and then on the other side of the the little corridor here where it comes to the woods, I'm going to put one in there and uh, see what we can do. I had bad luck here last year. Man, I had it was plagued by a digger fox. He would he would urinate on the sets. He would, you know, dig up the, the traps and stuff. So hopefully I don't get bothered like that this year. Uh, but we'll see what happens. You never know, right? All right, let's get busy. Okay. Gonna set a dirt hole here on the corner of the soybean field. What I'm gonna do is hammer in there. Die. Shake it out. Leave as much as the dirt on the stirrup as possible. Yeah. This dirt is it's clay, it's not soft, it's hard. See how packed down it is? one and three quarter bridger it's night latched I just leveled it so that the pan is level with the jaw you can see I'm running a swivel and a chain stake I, I use pretty short stakes here because the ground is so hard to drive it down a, you know a foot and to leave a real long chain I really don't need to do that and I can put this stake you know that far even into the ground and just for me to pull it out it takes a tremendous I have to use a tool to remove it I can't pull it out by hand there's no way I'm gonna pull out by hand I'd have to put it to my truck to pull it out so we're gonna set this here sure we got a nice bed hole in the center for the swivel to fit down into. I don't mind the trap bed being a little be lower than where I'm going to have the hole because they'll have a tendency to want to step down into it. Like I said, this ground is really hard. I'm gonna use my uh, dirt hole punch as well. I like, this is really handy because I can angle the hole nicely and I can make the, the bait hole really deep so that they'll have a tendency to want to keep working on it. They can't just, you know, scoop the bait out of the hole real easy. This makes it pretty nice. Again, with the hard ground, it's rough. All right, let's get my driver. Alright, got our stake driver, got our trap. What I'm gonna do with that? Let's put the night latch back on. Trap to the spring. I'm setting it. I really like these super strength earth anchors. Just sits right in the end of the driver. That ground is hard, hard.
Wow. See what I mean about how hard that ground is? What I like about the chain on the trap is that unlike a cable, okay, then the anchor is set. Pull up on that and it will set it. The thing with the chain is unlike a cable, the chain will actually, the hole that I made down into the ground with the driver, the chain will fall down into that hole sit perfectly under the trap and it won't cause it to not want the bed properly it sits perfectly flat all right gonna make my trap trap click my swivel now should fit perfectly down in that hole. But why now a lot better? My swivel's gonna fit right in the hole. Just like that. Flush it free here. Jaw. Take that into the ground. Yeah, so it's, you do not want that to move if the fox walks on it and it moves. Game is up. He will dig it. Especially that loose jaw. Now I have a capping tool for my trap. This fits perfectly over it. So it won't let the dirt in underneath it. It also tells me exactly where my pan center is. Add it to make sure that the trap is solid. Like I said, this ground is hard. It's hard, hard. The real thing is, I don't want my jaws to move. I don't want the fox stepping on it. I feel it move. <laughs> There's a couple of soybeans. I tell you what. New machines, they don't leave much. Now we're gonna rinse some of this in a bit. want it to you really don't want to have the fox stepping anywhere around the trap but right on where your pan is so you want to try and guide it like here there's a couple of soybean stalks still stuck up out of the ground that you know are going to help guide him that he's not going to be walking around that he's going to step right where I want him to hopefully <laughs> that's the plan at least Like something's been digging here. You want to bat it down, but you don't want it to look like a map that's compacting it. Yeah, 
you don't want stones or sticks or anything else in your set that could you know cause your jaw to get stuck now I know exactly where the center of my pan is I'm gonna go one hand width up and over and that's where I'm gonna put my dirt hole so I'll use that width to mark where my pan is and I know where it's at how hard that ground is. <laughs> it is packed in there. <laughs> that hard pack. Now we got a nice dirt hole. It's nice and deep. Now where my pan's at. I'm gonna give it a bit of a finish. A little sticks out of there. You want enough. Dirt setting can be tough. You don't want too little dirt over the top of your pan uh, because the wind will blow it off. Especially if you're using like peat moss, which is really light. You just want enough that it's gonna, you know, stay on the on the top of the trap and to keep your pan just covered. Uh, you know, like I said, you don't want wind blowing it off. That's gonna uncover the trap or uncover your pan. stick there we can put some lure on that make sure you pick up all your tools driver. got us a lure stick cutter Okay, our setter's pretty much ready. We're gonna lure it now, and then we're gonna leave it. Okay, I'm gonna show you some of my the lures I like to use. Uh, I have also three sets of gloves. I have one set for making fresh sets. I have one set here for using the lure. Uh, then I have another set of gloves for making or doing remake sets. Because you don't wanna, uh, when you make a fresh set, you don't want any scent on your trap or any, you know, any animal scent or bait scent or lure scent on your trap because they'll dig it or, you know, they'll, they'll sniff around it and they'll dig at it and expose it. You don't want that. Uh, I try not to cross contaminate. If you catch an animal, that trap is going to smell like that animal and the ground around it is going to smell like that animal. Uh, especially fox, if they're going to urinate and they leave gland scent. Possum, they'll urinate, they leave gland, you know, any animal will do that. It, it's okay to reuse that trap. I've caught lots of animals in Especially for fox man. If you get a set that you catch a fox You're very likely to catch another fox in that set uh, Squirrels run around You're very likely to catch another fox in that set because the scent of that animal is there and it has a lot of eye appeal And there's a lot of scent appeal uh, But you don't want to use your fresh set gloves remaking that set because you're gonna get 
Fox scent on your gloves and then when you go and handle a new set that that's, you have boiled and dyed or waxed or whatever, you, how you prep it, uh, you're going to get that scent on that trap and you don't want to do that. So, you know, scent control is, is important. I have learned that the hard way. I have learned that the hard way. So, lure, I also use a separate set of gloves for handling the lures. That way I don't get scent on my hands. Some guys won't use the gloves. They'll just use their hands. Uh, I'll show you some of my the lures here that I use. This one here is with one. Kershaw's. Red brush, that's a canine, a predator, really, predator curiosity lure. Uh, I use the Minnesota brand uh, urines and stuff like that, fox urines. Uh, the Cavens, predator bait, I use that quite a bit. Uh, I'll try and avoid using bait early season. Sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. Sometimes I'll just use lure, uh, gland lure or, or a curiosity lure. If you use as, as my friend Todd Whitmar will attest, <laughs> we're plagued by uh, possums. Uh, if you put bait in a hole, the, the possum and the skunk are more likely to come to that set uh, with the scent of bait. Uh, I think just using the lure sometimes will help with that, you know, that you're not you know, getting your traps filled up with possums and stuff. Uh, if you use a fox gland lure and a fox or predator curiosity lure, then they will respond to that. Of course, that's not 100% foolproof. You're still gonna catch possums no matter what, because they'll come to the odor, they'll come to the fresh dig, they'll smell the dirt, and you know they'll they'll come and investigate the set. But with a bait, uh, especially a non-preserved bait like this, this bait is preserved, so it won't it won't freeze and it won't rot. Uh, I think the smell of that bait is gonna be more of an attractant to that uh, to the possum and the skunk which you want to try and avoid well some guys will catch them anyway and, and you know skin them out and what have you but if you're strictly trapping coyote fox and bobcat we'll say the, the big three predators there uh you know sometimes early season late season the bait is good uh because as it gets colder you get you know the scent is more suppressed and uh the bait can help the, the bait is there to keep the animal work in the set too is once the scent draws them to the set uh you you want the bait to keep them occupied at the set and have them uh you know working around it the more he works around that set the more chance you have of him stepping in that trap so that's the theory behind it anyway here's another lures i use here this is a cavens minnesota red and all of these lures i'm showing you i have caught fox and and coons and other animals on uh, this is another Cavens lure, Canine Force. The Minnesota Red is a gland lure. The Canine Force is more of a curiosity lure. That's another Canine Force. Hawbakers is another good lure. This one's a gray fox. This is a real strong odor of skunk. Uh, it's not quite as strong as Gusto, but it does have a strong odor of skunk to it. Here's another hawbakers, a raccoon, I'll call. If you smell this, it smells like licorice, like anise. Very sweet too, kind of a mix, I'll say, between grape jelly and anise, uh, like a licorice smell to it. The, the coons seem to like that. And like I said, then I'll use uh, some uh, Minnesota red urine as well. I like the Minnesota brand products, they, they pretty work pretty well for me, and they're easily available. They're sold at my local Cabela's. I can you know order you can mail order any type of lure that you want, but you know I've had success with all those lures. All right, let's finish our set. need too much. Pea sized amount is more than enough. Just smear a bit on the stick there. Just a smear on the top. You only need, 
you don't need too much, just a little bit. And this, from what I've seen, watching lots and lots and lots of videos, Some people have a tendency to like rebate and relure their sets too much. You don't need to do that. We are good to go. I'll show you what the set looks like. Turn my mat up. Lift that back up. There's our dirt hole. Punched out perfect. The pan center is about right there. So it's offset. You can see the little sticks and stuff here. There's a little tuft behind it. That's to try and discourage them. Also, the bait hole is down at that angle this way. I'm trying to encourage them to come from this side where my trap is. The little sticks and stuff here and the little tufts of the soybean there. I'm hoping they're going to discourage them. Also, you can see where the the soybean truck came through here on Friday, and he lowered the grass down here. So the fox is probably going to want to travel on that. But hopefully, now he comes to that and visits it, and and we get him. Time will tell. <laughs> 